Ladies and gentlemen of the Source Movement community, I proudly present to you the greatest advancement in the Source to Blender world. There might not be too many people working in that field. Okay, when it comes to movement mods, it might only be me. But that doesn't take away from how amazing this new milestone is. Okay, maybe a bit. Anyway, if you would set out to upload a world or personal record in the best possible quality to YouTube, you would render the demo with Crashford Source Video Render, or SVR in short. With its customizable motion blur, speed overlay and smoothing, it has been community standard ever since its release in 2016. And what you see here is such a rendered video, as you have seen it thousands of times before. Except it isn't. The gameplay is rendered in SVR, but this speed is not from SVR. It has been measured by me in Blender, put in a text object by me in Blender, and then rendered out and laid over the run by me in Premiere. This is my speed overlay. Okay, okay, I know what you think. Well done, you spent, what? Oh, five weeks, all right, okay. Five weeks to make something possible that already exists. Yes, but also that's not where it ends. Having the speed as values in Blender opens the door to so many cool ideas. For example, the speed could change color based on the player's speed. It could also change size based on speed. If we get fancy, I could even add a speedometer. Or maybe a progress bar based on distance rather than simple time. Okay, that is not really based on the speed value, but I think you'll get the idea. But these are just some conservative ideas that may or may not look good when used as overlay on actual runs. You could, however, also use the data on the actual map if we then render it out in Blender and also make use of geometry nodes. Then sky is the limit. Now every texture could react to the player speed or change with another texture according to the speed or just the visibility in the first place. We could also determine the geometry sizes, rotations or positions. We can make the speed influence the metalness or roughness or emission strength of all the textures or some textures or selected textures. You see, we can do basically whatever we want. Okay, but how does it work? Well, it was a long way. Shout out to GPT-4 who, with only daily free answers, wrote the script in its entirety. Or rather, wrote the dozens and dozens of iterations of it. It also took forever to make the data look good. I will explain that later when we talk about data and intervals in more detail. If there is a lost soul out there that wants to do any of the stuff themselves, I put all the stuff together in one add-on with a nice user interface for easy use. Good, let's get into it. Oh, two things real quick. This of course works with every object, not only source movement game runs, and secondly it only measures horizontal speed, meaning only on the x and y axes. There were iterations of the add-on where you could choose which axis you would get the data from, but they got massacred by GPT 3.5 and I didn't bother on wasting the precious GPT 4 answers to properly implement it again. All right, for starters, we select the object we want to measure the speed of and press get speed in the add-on overlay. Now the script will iterate through every frame pair, looks at the object's position and measures the distance that lays between these positions. That gives us the units per frame for every single frame. Now, considering the frame rate, the script calculates how many units you would pass in a second. Oh, and if you wonder why the units per second by Blender fits with sources units of measurement, I got absolutely no idea. And I do not care, no need to understand something that already works. The resorting speed data for every pair of frames is now stored in a text block that can even be inspected by us in the text editor. Now, we can use this data for our needs either in the shader editor or geo node editor, or to create a text object. Shader editor and geo nodes work the same way. The script will create a value node in them, in which every frame has the according speed represented as a keyframe. This can already be used for funny stuff, but a lot of things require the normalization of the data. For example, the roughness of a material can be zero for not rough at all, or one for full rough, or everything in between. But our data is way bigger than one as soon as the player moves. So the material would be totally rough all the time. But we can add a map range node and with the min and max values of our data printed in the console that we can add in the node, 
we can now choose what the output scale should be. With 0 and 1, it means that our lowest value, which is 0, it's still 0, but our highest value equals now 1. And all other values equal their respective fraction of the max value. You can play around with both scales to in or decrease the range of values that represent min or max values. Let's just hope I found a way to visualize that well, because that's a piss poor explanation. But with that, you should be all set for whatever shenanigans you want to do in either workspace. Last but not least, we can create a text object that changes frame by frame according to the speed data. You can change font, material, you can pretty much do whatever you want other than changing it into a mesh. There's a very small problem. The text a text object shows cannot be stored as keyframes, at least not to mine and gpt force knowledge. So the script utilizes a driver for that. They do not get saved between sessions though. So when closing and opening the project again, just press create the text object again. And given you haven't renamed the text object, the text should now update perfectly fine again with everything else still being in place. Perfect. One last thing, the accuracy of the data. And this is much more layered as first glance would lead you to believe. Blender's values do not always match perfectly with what SVR puts out. Actually, for the vast majority of frames, there are deviations. And a huge part of my time on this project went into figuring out why and how to fix my values. I thought maybe it's a problem in obtaining the speed, maybe in the processing of the data, maybe even in the process of getting the camera data, which I couldn't do anything about. But the data is not clear, wrong. Like it's off by hundreds of units all the time. For the most part, it is in reasonable range. So I try to fix it by implementing a moving average, a weighted average, a Gaussian smoothing, but nothing really helped. But when I put my numbers next to SVRs and went frame for frame and looked at the gameplay, I finally understood it. And right afterwards got very, very confused. SVR might be in the wrong, but first the smoothness. SVR doesn't update the speed every frame, both of this is recorded in 60 FPS, you see, but SVR updates the information every third frame. That's the reason my speed looks so nervous, because it changes every frame, so 60 frames a second, instead of just 20 times a second. But that's not consistent between renderings. I mean, mine is, SVR is not. SVR sometimes, for reasons that are beyond me, renders with single frame updates, resulting in a just as nervous speed display as mine in Blender, like here in Not the Zombies SMG stage video. But okay, that just means I need to add the option to use interval in which the speed is measured and consequently displayed. Now my numbers are just as nice looking. There is a theoretical question we need to ask ourselves when we're working with these intervals. Is it the best way to use the average of the three frames to be displayed? The speed only for the first one or the second one or the third one? But we don't really need to ask that because, and that's the huge twist in this whole thing, there is no one real data we can compare to. There's no way to know what the actual speed is. Apparently, SVR's data is just as illogical at times as minus. For example, teleport between stages. Mine shows a super high number because Blender of course doesn't know that the player teleported here, the camera actually traveled there in Blender, so that's a lot of distance to cover. Let's forget about that. But then, zero speed. Blender says, zero horizontal speed. Not according to SVR though. That wants to tell us that we are constantly moving, but zero makes so much more sense here. Because the spawn cage stops your velocity down to zero, there's no way around it. And the camera data in Blender supports that. And so does just logic thinking. I mean, look at the footage. There is no movement. SVR is in the wrong here. I think logic. Looking if the gameplay we see fits with what either software wants to tell us about the speed is the best way to determine how sound the displayed speed is. It might not even be SVR or Blender's fault, but just good old source itself not knowing what the hell is going on at times. I don't know. Look at this. Stage 2. Joshua jumps from the start platform. Speed stays more or less consistent, okay, and then for no reason decreases from one frame to the other. Just to then increase again afterwards. Doesn't make sense. And this is what they both display. And look at this, SVR shows an increase in speed way before the player boards the ramp, even though there is no reason why the player should accelerate here already. In this case, 
my data is more accurate than SVRs because it shows an increase as soon as the player touches the ramp and then increases much more consistently until the bottom of the ramp, causing great differences between the two software's numbers. And that, by the way, is the case for almost all ramp boardings, all the time. But for most of the time, both can agree on the maximum speed, like here on stage 7. But on the ramp before the jump, we get discrepancies of 200 or more units on some frames. And here I'm not sure which numbers make more sense. So whenever there is enough time, when flying through the air for example, both can agree plus minus a couple of units. This is around the speed the player moves at. But during times of rapid change, the deviation is much bigger. And I say deviation as if Blender numbers are deviating from the real numbers of SVR, but, but I genuinely think the Blender numbers just make as much or little sense as the SVR numbers do, and sometimes they are even more accurate, at least looking from a pure logical standpoint. Yeah, okay, that's basically it. I'm aware that most of these shenanigans, other than what would be used in an overlay, is pretty much useless, especially with the work and Blender noted some of them demand, but I may try some renders with changing color or something, just for fun. Alright, until next time, see you. Bye.